Hi, in this tutorial, Tutorial 5, Section 2, I will be discussing control and object properties and demonstrate using the dot operator to set object properties at runtime. Within object oriented programming in general, there are various objects which exist. In Gambas, for example, there are forms, secondary containers, and numerous GUI controls which can be used to construct a GUI program. These objects have programmable characteristics which are called properties. These properties can be set in the IDE at design time by the programmer. Object properties define such aspects as size, location, whether or not they are enabled or visible, and various other properties that are specific to the individual objects. Many objects, both controls and containers, share many of the same types of properties. Some objects, however, have properties that are limited to those specific objects. Here are some typical code references to objects and their properties. When accessing object properties, the object is accessed by its name, followed by a period also called a dot, and then the property which is being accessed is referenced by its name. Commonly, in actual code, object property combinations look like this. To recap, the object's name occurs first in the object property identity. Next is the dot joining operator. This is the method used in code to identify an individual software element as being an element within a specific software object. In this case, a software addressable property which defines a characteristic of that particular GUI element. And finally comes the actual property which is being accessed, either set or read. These properties define the characteristics of the object, such as size, placement, or specific functionality within the program. It is important to understand that the properties can also be queried as to their current status, as well as being set to some value. So at runtime, as opposed to design time assignments, it is necessary, in code, to fully identify the individual property via the object to which it is attached. Here are some example code assignments. The properties exist as variables of specific data types such as text strings, numeric values, and true-false one-zero values. Different properties can only be set to specific values as defined by their types. This is related to the way that computer programs store data in memory. As I have mentioned before, variables have different data types, which I will explain in greater detail in upcoming tutorials. You will pick these up as you follow upcoming code examples. Also, during design time, setting the properties within the IDE Gambas will only present those options that are valid. In fact, a quick way to determine valid property values is often to look at the individual property choices available at design time or to consult the Gambas help system. In this example, the code sets the fmain form's background color to the numerical value 255, which happens to be an intermediate blue. Here, the code example sets the control button 1's text property to the text string my button. And in the final code example, checkbox 1's enabled property is set to the binary choice true. This property can only take one of two possible values, 1 or 0, true or false. In programming, this is referred to as a boolean or binary variable. In this case, the checkbox control is either accessible by the user at runtime or it's not, and it's grayed out to tell the user that it is not an available option. As you can see, setting a property at runtime through basic code is virtually identical to assigning a value to a variable. Here the property is set to the desired content via the equal sign. That completes the quick overview of the fundamentals of object properties in Gambas. These concepts will become very familiar as we create and experiment upon various program examples in the upcoming tutorials. 
In the next part of the tutorial, tutorial 5.3, I will be expanding upon the Button Experiment 1 program which we created in tutorial 5.1. I hope it will give you a good grounding in modifying programs and setting control properties and also encourage you to begin experimenting. Again, thanks for taking a look at these videos and joining me as I explore the Gambas language and making these videos. I hope you find them useful.